sockeye salmon migrate more than 700 miles to an elevation more than 6,500 feet to get home to Redfish Lake where they party and make baby sockeye salmon. Well, at least they used to. Partly because of more obstacles. Like this one. Actually, there's eight of them in the way. So what can we do? Well, Joe Vandal knows. Joe's gonna go get a genetic insurance policy for them at the University of Idaho's Gibb Hall. Because sperm are so small, they're really easy to freeze with liquid nitrogen. But even the tiny zebrafish's egg is 160 times bigger, and a sockeye salmon's egg is still six times bigger than that. So how can Joe keep eggs for the future? <laughs> salmon come from eggs produced in ovaries, which come from primitopoporp bob germ cells. When salmon hatch, these cells migrate to the genital ridges, where they become either ovaries or testes. How can Joe use this info? Well, by injecting some rainbow trout. But it's not that simple. Trout cells are different than salmon cells, and the immune system will destroy them. But if we back up and inject the salmon cells before the immune system shows up, it won't know the difference. Now scientists in Japan recently discovered a type of germ cell in a fish's testes that, when injected into a young fish, behaved just like a primordial pr pr a bob germ cell. Even though it comes from a male fish's testes, a female fish's DNA will make it become ovaries. So today, scientists at the University of Idaho remove sockeye salmon testes and freeze them for future use. When needed, they harvest the stem cells and inject them into young rainbow trout. The salmon germ cells then colonize the genital ridges and are instructed by the fish's DNA to become ovaries. Now it takes three years for a trout to reach sexual maturity, but when they do, they will hopefully be making sockeye salmon eggs. If successful, so long as scientists have frozen sockeye salmon sperm and testes, they can never disappear.